Today's video is on viral taxonomy, and in this video we're going to be taking the medically relevant viruses, especially those that infect human beings, and putting them in taxonomic order. We won't be going into too much detail about these viruses in this video, we're just going to be putting them in order. This is the first part of a two-part series, and in this video we'll be doing the overview before we get into specific viruses and how we put them in order. So viruses are classified in two ways. One, they can be classified by their taxonomy, which is determined and maintained by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, or the ICTV, or by their genome and the way in which they create mRNA strands for protein synthesis. Protein synthesis will be done by the host using the host's ribosomes and other necessary enzymes. The second type of classification is called the Baltimore system. Viral taxonomy is not like typical living organisms taxonomy in that we don't usually start with a domain since we are unsure of whether or not viruses are living. So we start instead with order and then move down to species and then sometimes even serotype. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to start with an order and normally the order of a virus will end in the suffix viralis. Next will come family which will end in the suffix viridae and then subfamily virinae, genus, virus, and then species will have the species name. And you may also sometimes have serotypes. Please note that some virus families don't have subfamilies and some virus species don't have serotypes. So for example, with herpes, the order is herpes viralis, the family is herpes viridae, the subfamily is alpha herpes virinae, and there are other subfamilies, but we're just considering alpha right now. So alpha herpes virinae subfamily, and then the genus simplex virus, and then under this genus there are two medically relevant species, herpes simplex 1 and herpes simplex 2. Now, for those of you who have studied virology before, you know that there are other herpes viruses, but they will fall under different subfamilies and genuses. Also, another note, not all orders are named, so some viruses will be part of something called no assigned order. Now, if you look at the Baltimore method, we classify viruses here based on their genome. So some viruses will start with either an RNA or a DNA strand, and how they ultimately make mRNA will depend on what genome they start with. So we can also classify viruses based on their genome. This is called the Baltimore method. So group 1 will be double-stranded DNA viruses, group 2 will be single-stranded DNA viruses, group 3 will be double-stranded RNA viruses, group 4 will be the positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses, group 5 will be the negative sense single-stranded RNA viruses, group 6 will be the single-stranded RNA viruses that are retrotranscribing, and group 7 will be the double-stranded DNA viruses that are retrotranscribing. I personally like to use both methods. First, we can organize the viruses into their genomic classes using the Baltimore method, and then we can look at where each of those viruses falls within the ICTV taxonomic tree. It's easier to organize our viruses slightly out of numerical order when you consider the Baltimore method, and I'll demonstrate how to do this in the next slide. So remember, our viruses can either be DNA viruses or RNA viruses. Among the DNA viruses, we can either have single-stranded DNA viruses or double-stranded DNA viruses. The same can be said of RNA viruses. They can either be single-stranded or double-stranded. The single-stranded DNA viruses constitute Baltimore Group 2. The DNA viruses that are double-stranded constitute Baltimore Group 1 as well as Baltimore Group 7 if they're retrotranscribing. So they're going to start with a double-stranded DNA genome and then they're going to retrotranscribe back into a double-stranded DNA genome to insert into the host. And RT in this scheme means retrotranscribing. The double-stranded RNA viruses constitute Baltimore Group 3 and then the single-stranded RNA viruses can be divided essentially into three groups. The positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses constitute Baltimore group 4. The negative sense single-stranded RNA viruses constitute Baltimore group 5. And then the retrotranscribing single-stranded RNA viruses will constitute group 6. Note that the plus sign means positive sensed and the negative is negative sensed or positive stranded, negative stranded. 
So this is our overview of the viruses and how we're going to begin to group them and start looking at their taxonomic groups. So in the next video, labeled Viral Taxonomy 2, we will look at each of these groups and see where the medically relevant viruses fall within both the Baltimore classification as well as the ICTV taxonomic tree. I hope this video helped you in your studies in medical virology and or microbiology. Please visit PsychoMicro on these social media platforms and leave any comments, suggestions, or questions below if you feel so inclined. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best in your studies.